everybody. I'm David Uwe. I'm the executive director of the Chinese American Museum here in D.C. We are the first and only museum in our nation's capital dedicated to the Chinese American story. So in our ongoing mission to highlight Chinese Americans doing amazing things, we present Building a Business with Passion, Fashion, and Blame. It is officially our first event where we've used the word blame. <laughs> So today, we will hear the incredible story of, and talents of Mindy Lam and her daughter, Kai Sia. So speaking of amazing Chinese Americans, here to lead the discussion is Ginny Gong, host of the TV show East Meets West, and past president of the National Organization of Chinese Americans. Ginny was nominated uh, to the Maryland Women's Hall of Fame and subsequently recognized as one of the distinguished women leading the way. So today's event is made possible through the generous support of Ting Shu and James Shu of Evergreen Enterprises, and as part of our Women Entrepreneurs Program Series. So I turn it over to our good friend, Jimmy Gong. Thank you, David, for the introduction. Our guest today is a celebrated artist and jewelry designer known for her meticulously handcrafted jewelry, featuring her signature metals and semi-precious stones and more. From couture one-of-a-kind pieces for the red carpet to ready-to-wear fashion in for an evening out, her work is beloved by fashion influencers the world over. Her work reflects the classic couture of the old, but offers a refreshingly, sorry, but offers a refreshingly modern edge that echoes the joy of childhood influences. Her life journey is one of commitment, fortitude, and resilience. Raised on her family farm in Hong Kong, diagnosed with end-stage renal failure, and living as a kidney transplant survivor. She has experienced the lowest of life's experiences, as well as the epitome of personal and professional success. Her work has been included in some of the most prestigious fashion magazines, such as Vogue, Elle, and Glamour, on the fashion runway, and featured in the luxury clothier Henry Bendel in Manhattan, in the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston, and at the Talbot Museum of Art in Virginia. There is so much more that I can say, but let's hear from today's special guest, designer Mindy Lamb and her daughter, kidney donor, and managing director of Mindy Lamb Couture, Kai Sia. A warm welcome to both of you. Mindy, I must say that I've looked at your creations in doing the research for this interview, and they almost immediately transport me to a world of fantasy and luxury. They're just exquisite, as you can see. I'm modeling one of them. So let's begin with you know, some of the common adjectives that are often used to describe your work, besides my word exquisite, include seductive, whimsical, opulent, avant-garde, breathtaking, and romantic. Many have called your work wearable art. Are those the images that you want to evoke in your designs? Seductive, avant-garde, all of these? Are these the things you try to present? Um, most likely. I got a lot of um, compliments that my clients share with me. That is uh, almost the word that you tell me. But actually, uh, in, my, in my collection and my brand that I want to share with people is my own whimsical and magical world. Whoever have the feeling of being um, elegant, like a magical, and um, the feeling of how they uh, feel is what I want to um, get my voice to know what I decide, how they feel and how they want to name it. And what the purpose for me is to share my passion and my creation to the people they uh, recognize my, wor my world. Well, I have to admit, when you put this on me, I felt very different. Okay. <laughs> Whimsical, you know, sexy. <laughs> the names of your creations are very intriguing, um, Mindy, such as 
Rhino Beetles Midday Snack. I mean, who comes up with names like that, right? Well, this I will tell you. You know, like I meditate every morning and before I do my creations, you know, and my work. After I did it, then I will call my little one here <laughs> and, and tell her that what I have created and what is in my mind. Uh -huh. And of course, with the young word, they come up with the name. Well, um, a better way to kind of articulate this is Lam grew up in a farm in Hong Kong. And 26 years later, she had me grow up in the same farm. So all the magical secret garden that she's seen as a child, I also share. So I think we speak a language of like, um, I'm like her best translator. So you look at her work, uh, and a lot of us are like that. I think she's better at telling stories mm -hmm. through her work and what she can make than her words. Um, and even some of us are the same where we can't really tell our feelings, but we can express it different ways. Uh, That's so, a true artist. Yeah, you know, artists relay their their messages in, in a whole you know all different ways. Yeah. And you're the words, and mom's the creation, right? Well, it's it's like I have to put myself in her shoes. Yeah. She grew up doing hard chores. When I was at the farm, I was a spoiled, a spoiled <laughs> grandkid. I was the grandkid. I I, had, I didn't have was tasked with much, but Lamb had to. How do I get through this rough day of farm work? Okay, I'm gonna picture I'm a princess. And all the creatures that I see, we have mouses, we have spiders, we have like all the creatures that some people might deem scary or creepy. She loves them because she sees them as her friend. So like these these things are easy to name because we're not thinking of it as just the artwork. Lamb meditates, she walks in, she walks back out with these jewelry. So you're you're listening to the beetles, you're smelling the flowers and all of that. Wow. Yeah. You know, your manner of work has been described as if it's a spider spinning a web. Yeah. And in looking at some of your creations, it really is very descriptive of what you do. Tell us about your creative process, the spider spinning the web. Um, the spider spinning the web is created by my uh, mentor. And when she first described me, I said, ah, oh, I know. And who is that? Um, her name is Joanne Castillo, okay. which is also the person with, um, I later met. When she um, put that word in me, I said, I don't look like a spider. I don't work like a spider. Why should she put that? But when she learned about my work, uh, then I realized one thing is, I could continue wrapping just like a spider. Mm -hmm. From my choker, then I got down to the uh, council. From the camera so it came down to the uh, gown, now sitting in Thailand Museum. And am I like a spider, wrapping spider? Yes, yes I am. <laughs> but at the first meeting, I don't see it. <laughs> but you have a, uh, a number of collections. Let's, let's talk about a few of them in your repertoire of work. What, what is the collection that you started off with? I started off with a... Um, I got a uh, fast eating uh, bacteria disease, so I had to kill in the time. At that time, I did not know what this jewelry mean to me. I just started with a wire and bead. So my first collection um, is only beads and flower and leaf. Mm -hmm. And later on, when I... Uh, and what is that collection called? Is there a name? The classic, the classic collection. collection. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I learn more, and that my imagination go further, and then I um, practice more and getting to more. Then we go to the um, the um, couture collection, you know. And then we, when then we have own collection. Then after the um, museum exhibition, exhibition, then we. We, I go to the um, like ethereal, and then uh, I create the uh, metal lace gown and metal lace uh, collection. Wow, that's a, it's a journey, right? Yeah. Yeah. It does. It remind me of people who sit and they just crochet while they're <laughs> watching TV or whatever. You started just playing with wires and, and beads and yeah. Oh, she didn't start playing. <laughs> she started because uh, my she had a, a rare disease that was giving her a lot of pain. Mm. So my, my aunt gave her beads and wires to distract herself from the pain. Wow. And like a, a spider spinning a web, it went from a necklace to uh, a choker to a bralette to a camisole. And someone saw her talent and said, Run with this. You're, you're alive. Just go. Wow. You'll, you'll learn you're going to need leg bangles, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
you know, it's very rare to have jewelry that's designed where men and women can wear it. What made you go in that direction? I mean, I, I find that very unusual, but <coughs> kind of neat. Yes, you know, like when I was starting the classic collection, people, like men often ask, why do you don't create a um, man collection? At that time, you know, we were busy to um, get the brand out and get the brand steady. So um, with the COVID, unfortunately, a lot of retailer and everything was shut down. And then we're trying to catch up with the mother day. And then the deadline was passed. And then I say, well, what can we do? Father Day is coming. So I said, well, and I think Father Day is what, we, what can we do? Then, you know, I go up on a farm that, you know, the Chinese opera come once a year. So when I say, huh, back then, you know, Renaissance and Chinese emperor, you see the king wearing pearl, mm -hmm. and this pearl, this pearl, pearl that. Mm -hmm. I say, well, wait now, the man, only I saw is like a cuffling watch and all that. I say, why? I don't listen to the men and tell me, you know, I created the, the collection called OM, that men can, uh, when men recognize my work, they will be added in their wardrobe. But also, with women, we we wearing tux now and then the own collection easily. So um, when I created that collection, I got a uh, very uh, well, um, um, huh? Well, well, we say for people that to um, to get this collection, um, not, you know, they like, um, start really, really well. No, I think that's a great approach. In fact, that's the businesswoman in you. You know, you, you looked and you said there's an opportunity, and it, it seems to have really paid off. Your designs extend beyond jewelry. In fact, you created dresses and capes out of metal wire. What's involved in terms of the labor and the resources needed to create something of the magnitude of the dress you have on display downstairs, which is magnificent? Okay, <clears throat> talking about spider, right? You know, I did the meditation, I caught 10,000 spider were helping me <laughs> to do that. And also, you know, like, when I do the, um, the metal work, I, Always, you know, when I meditate, I say, please make this metal become a threat. So it's easy, very easy to, for me to work with the discipline, practice, and also um, I focus on working on the um, the gowns and or capes, you know. So that will be helping me to um, share with my uh, passion of being an artist. Of course, you know, I have a group of people that were helping me with the um, mass production. Mm -hmm. So, specifically, I read somewhere, how many hours did, did it take you to create a dress like the one you have on display? It's thousands of hours, you know, without sleeping and all that. And also, um, to, talk, to share about that, um, she's not only my manage, uh, managing director, she also is my therapy. When my hand cannot move anymore, I call Kai, please help, you know? So, so, so she, she means massages. <laughs> <laughs> she means massages. Yeah, many titles. Right? <laughs> I, I wear quite a few hats. But I want to reiterate on the gowns, or like you see a cape right here. Um, the beauty of it, it cannot come, of course, with uh, great funding, having enough a uh, luxury of time that an artist can sit down and really dedicate to a grand piece. It all comes with um, refining your work, recognizing who you are before you can even invest in the material because yeah. if you don't know who you are, you're spending money on materials making nothing. And you can't mass produce things you, like this because cannot. they're all yeah. uniquely created. Yes, um, so yes. Until you get to a point where you can put it through a machine and, and come there's up no with product, right? There's no machine. There's no machine with yeah. us. Yeah. So that's yeah. what it is. If, you, if uh, later you guys want to examine her hands, uh, I'll let you guys eat for three minutes with her and you can see her hands. It's, it's all of, it's sweat and blood. Yeah. Well, I'm never wearing that dress for one reason, it's 70 pounds, right? So, <laughs> from what I read, um, but it's really beautiful. Yeah. To fully understand where all of this creative energy comes from, um, Mindy, let's talk a little bit about your life journey, okay? Tell us about, you know, when you were young, what happened, and, and how you got to where you are today. 
Um, that kind of share a little bit um, of growing up on a farm. She is a spoil from my grand from her grandfather, which is my dad. And I have a tiger father, which I have to work very hard on the farm. I have to cleaning the chicken and the uh, pig and all that. So my my imagination with killing the times that being working hard. So my imagination, sometimes I could be a princess, I could be this, I could be that. I really are uh, looking forward to each year that I can go to um, the Bamboo Bill Theater for once a year, and then we see the, uh, the Chinese opera. Then when I see the Chinese opera, at that time I don't know what jewelry means to me, but I see all the sparkling and everything, everybody using the fashion, you know, like moving, and it's fascinating. Yeah. You know, so after that, we go down to the bamboo uh, theater to try to pick, I thought that is diamond, but actually it's wine stone. She goes know. under the stage of the bamboo uh, theater yeah. for so, Cantonese opera. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when that, I don't even know that the universe have already depended a seat on me that I was fascinated by all this, you know. So when I grow up, I, I like to create, I talked it sounds like a little bit weird, but not really weird because when you are like like us, you know, I talking to tree, I talking to inside bird and all that. I have a whole family, so you know, like when I do that later on, when you see my word, you can definitely people say, how can you create that? I think because I talk to them, you know. So that's that's go that far. Yeah. Okay, so let's go further. Okay, you you you, you grew up on the farm, and then life really gave you a major blow. What about that? Two blows. Two blows. Tell them. <laughs> the one is, you know, when, the, the one is, you know, when um, I learned, you know, I tell myself, you know, being a Chinese American, what did I need, I really want to have my child. I want my child to grow up to learn, speak and talk Chinese, write Chinese, and be proud to be a Chinese. So I sent her back, and then when I go visit her, I uh, get a disease called bacteria eating fresh disease. At that time, you know, I have to kill my uh, the the pain and all that. So I starting to strain all that, and then um, from the nickness to be a a, a, a brass and then a commissal. Later on, I starting to put the pieces together. So six months passed. I coming back with a group of things that I trying to wear. So people say, wow, you should be a designer. I say, I have not. And then they say, let's make a show. And in that show, three days we sell $30,000. And I say, well, maybe I should be a designer. <laughs> <laughs> so then I start. And then the very funny part is, Hemi Bando is one of the, um, the company made me successful at that point mm -hmm. because when people know about Hemi Bando, Hemi Bando is lined up. Usually people know people need to line up out of the building and then they they been select who will do the shows. But I was fortunately to do a tra um, trade shows and Harry, the buyer of Hemi Bando approached me and I say she said I want you to do a show. I say sure, then we do a show. And then when we did the shows and they are very impressed, they say I want to come back. Because I don't have any background of being a designer or, or working, I say no. She say why? I say, I'm not coming back and forth from DC and here eight hours and standing six hours. And she say, what will make you come back? I say, I want a case. She say, excuse me? <laughs> People standing here for three years, not even have one shelf, you want a case? I say, yeah. <laughs> so they say, okay, bye. You know, like two weeks after, they say, my, pres uh, my president, my CEO really want you to come back. We will give you a case for a week. I say, okay, but I stay there for a case for 10 years. Good time. Wow. <laughs> and then from Happy <laughs> And Happy Bandel is almost like a, um, like a temple for people to come in. So because I was in Hemi Bando, then I was I was easily enter 400 store at that moment, and also the view, you know, and Good Morning America starting to uh, interview, not interview, they wearing our pieces or they talking about the pieces with Hemi Bando, and I'm really grateful for that. So you need a stepping, you know, a start somewhere. That's yes. great. But in between, or with all of this going on in your life you ended up with renal failure. Yeah. 
and I know that that's not always an easy thing to talk about, but I think it's important for us to understand what you went through and how you rebranded yourself to be where you are today. Let's talk a little bit about that, and Kai, if it's a little difficult, maybe you can, you know, chime in. Sure. Um, I got you. That, um, to me right now, as you look at me, I don't have any, um, um, I am not feel sad that what have happened, and actually I'm glad for that have happened because you know when when you have not learned to be what you are um, known of your character, you know like for us we work very hard, and then to me you know as a um, like myself as a Chinese American, I really want to prove it to my parents or my family that we are doing okay, right? So when I I worked very very hard at that time, like I did not even um, rest, and uh, when my kidney fell, that it's almost like my whole world have dropped. Um, if you're talking about rebuild the brand, I take two good years to ask myself be before you rebuild the brand. I have to rebuild myself, the confidence yeah. and everything. Because being a successful person, all by a sudden you, you lost everything and and whatever you provide to your family, everything has dropped. And then I I tell myself, go to your intuition. You come to American with zero. You build your brand with people known and magazine known and then all by a sudden now everything crashed. Are you going to build a brand or are you going to build yourself? Are you have the confidence to get yourself back to where you belong to or just find a job hiding and not show up? And at that time I say to myself, if you will do what you're going to do, I tell myself this time I'm not listening to the people tell me what the commercial can do. I go with my passion. Which uh, later on guide me to not just only be a designer, also a um, the artist. Because now I go with my passion. Go with I want people to um, to learn about my intuition, my passion, and um, and my work. And also I involve with more charities. But it is important, you know. You have to be physically well enough to be able to then, you know, take that creativity yeah, yeah. to another level. So. Kai, tell us a little bit about that period in, you know, of cha health challenges for mom. You became your mom's donor, which yeah. is just a, an, <laughs> a massive uh, decision for anybody. What's your sense of what happened and, and where you are today? I mean, it's, um, it's easy to talk about it now because yeah. you're out of it. Right. While I was in it, it felt like I was um, out of breath. It felt like the world didn't prepare me to do this, but obviously she raised a kid that was gonna be tough enough for all the challenges to come. When That's this first happened, here. you were underage, right? I was I a sophomore in high school, okay. and um, we she didn't have health insurance, so one of the reasons that she got fell so ill is because she kept taking care of everyone else in the company everyone else in the family, making sure that everyone felt comfortable before she took care of herself. So I remember the day her heartbeat stopped and I was in high school. Uh, I got a phone call and we, we were, it's, you know, she grew up in a farm, but I grew up with quite a lavish life. I was very privileged and had a good life. So I think for the first time at a young age, your priority is very different than your peers that did something to me. I think for the first time I understood financial responsibility and maybe we weren't even that tight, but to me it was. Mm -hmm. So when there was chances, I, I worked at a bubble tea shop, I worked at a dim sum place, I started at the Chinese places, <laughs> then I became a clown in a haunted forest. Oh, wow. I, you were very successful. Oh, I was so scary. <laughs> but um, I did everything I could to keep the lights on, even though she didn't ask me to because that's what she did for all of us. So when it comes to term of like, I don't see it like my donation as an act of kindness. I saw it as my only chance of survival. Like this is my mother, there's no hesitation. I have to save her because that's my only family in America. Um, 
that took quite a few years. I had to turn 18, but I, I, I did a lot to prove her that I will have responsibility. Unlike most people of my age, I really took care of my body and showed her that, hey, I'm going to make a commitment. If I'm going to take care of you, I'm going to take care of myself. So I quit soda, I quit everything. But one thing that I think we should all pay attention to is when your family member gets ill, if yourself gets ill, you have a sense of hopelessness or helplessness that you don't know how to help them. Um, I remember what you see is as, as, a, as a kid, and I carry that with me for a long time, is your confidence, your smile starts to get stripped away, your dignity gets lower and lower, and then there's times where you look at yourself and your mother, you don't recognize your roles anymore in each other's lives, and then you just have to clench on and then somehow get here. Well, I'll tell you the stories that you both shared are quite an inspiration, wouldn't you say, for all of us. And I think that um, we all raise up spoiled brats in this world. <laughs> and I'm proud maybe, maybe I need to send my, uh, my adult children, right? But um, you know, what you're sharing is uh, very poignant, and um, I think it's uh, important for us all to, to realize yeah. what you and your mom have gone through. But here we are, and, yeah. and you know, no one would ever know if you didn't share your stories mm -hmm. with us. These these very positive ideas about um, you know not just rebranding, but you know re envisioning life. Mm -hmm. So you know, now you're really into the business, yeah. and you've got your right hand support here. Um, where does the financing for everything that you're doing come from? I mean, this is a women's entrepreneurial uh, forum, and we all need to know where do women get the money to do what they need to do with their businesses. Besides, <laughs> okay, so well, you know, like as my kidney uh, failed, um, of course, you know, like when we lost everything, um, you don't have a um, a house or anything back you up to the banks to get the money or you easily can be able to open your mouth with the people that you know to loan you money. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, like, I am very fortunate to have, like, private people to funding me. And I, and here I want to share one thing is we have to be very careful mm -hmm. to take the money who we want and who will able to offer you the money. Because one of my investor that was get the money and what I don't know what to do because that person was involved with um, the design and all that and all of a sudden my brain have freeze. And, uh, and also, you know, like I will tell you, I was very fortunate to get a person that he was um, first is my uh, lawyer and then I was thinking, um, like to me, I don't know how to protect my brand and I really wanted to protect my brand before. That's why the brand right now is sitting in the museum and sitting everywhere. Because I don't feel like I've been protected, so I keep talking to him. What, what later on that um, he see the beauty and he trust the brand, which is cat right there. And, and he can invest the money on the brand and also with his involvement um, the investment become priceless because he is the guard to be in front of the business protect and seeing the business what we where we want to go and to protect whoever dare to do anything to the brand so for me with the finance I think finance is you know when we talk about finance, it's about money, mm -hmm. but to me, it's the power of who can be in your brand to influence and also protect yeah. the, the brand mm -hmm. with the money. Yeah. Of course, right, Kat? That's right. Yeah. I'd just like to add, like, if anyone is looking to start a business, or even an artist, right, you have to protect your artistic principle yeah. and who you are. You can ask everyone for money, and maybe a lot of people will be able to help you, but you have to also be in, stay in mind of the intention of when people are offering you something, is are you going to lose your, your ideas or your 
is someone going to block your creative process? Yeah, I guess we don't all think about all yeah. of these pieces that come together under the, you know, you quote want, unquote financing. You want a passionate person who believes in her vision, right, not right. just, I can also see you doing all of these things, you yeah. know? Yeah. So um, that's a challenge of being a female minority entrepreneur. Are there any other challenges that you have come across in your business or in doing business? As a female, um, as a female minority entrepreneur, I think you know, like I go through like two different generation. Um, in the first, very first beginning, you know, like. I will tell you, I don't know when did this uh, female uh, entrepreneurs that that we have to almost like prove it to people that we are better or we are really strong because if we get there to cry, they say, oh, woman, you are a woman, you know? So we have to work hard to prove it to the world that as a woman entrepreneur that we need to make, work harder to compare. And actually to me nowadays, I find one thing very interesting. When we're talking about women entrepreneur, I am with women entrepreneur with pounds, you know? But back then, <coughs> work hard, work hard. And sometimes when you want to cry, don't dare to cry. Other people looking, you're a woman, and then you will fail, you know? That, I think that is a challenge at that time. And now when I come back, rebrand the name, I will tell you, quite honest, I'm very proud because you don't have any challenge. Your challenge is just to tell people, you know, I'm here. You, so are you, you able to cry now? I mean, I can cry as now. I can, still feel successful. Now I can cry as loud as I am, <laughs> and people will say they give me a like, applause and then tell me, you know, we we, we are proud that you cry. You know? Yeah, like, I've always believed if you're going to be a woman, be a woman, right? right exactly. Be out there with your pearls and your high heels and uh, the tears, and then people, you know, will respect you for that at it's, some it's, point. It's just a different world. But yeah. I mean, back in the days. Uh, Celebrity chefs were all men. Artists were all men. If you're even tailors were all men. Like it's like if you're gonna cook as a woman, you're in a kitchen at home. If you're gonna like sew and fix a shirt, you're a tailor at home, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, a little bit she has to convince herself that yeah. I'm good enough to stand here. And then good thing is we're at a great timing where women are being empowered and uplifted by everyone, men and women. So right. we're lucky. It's a good time. Good timing. It's a good time. Good timing. So with all of these things that you've done and experienced, is there anything that you would have done differently? This always in my mind that I often ask asking myself, and unfortunately right now can apply to my, my business and life, I will give a word. It's called that word. When, when, if I can reverse times and uh, things, you know, I will tell you. With a that that word, this word is encourage where we want to be successful, but also it's very dangerous. They can easily to destroy you because you know, as a as a uh, again, I will repeat this as a um, Chinese American uh, majority in the U.S. We also really want to prove it to people. So as a tiger father to um, grow, to grow me, then I, I'm a tiger mom to her. And then when I have my business, I work very hard to prove it to people. With the desperate word, I just put word in my life. And I literally will forget, forget the balance. When you desperate, you don't have the balance that you will not have able to pause and think the things twice to make the plan better. At the times that at one point that I have not paid attention to my daughter, so she will be saying, I just have a boss, I don't have a mom. I say, I, I am your mom, I take care of you. And for, for me, you know, then I'm starting to think, you know, like, right now I'm here talking, it looks really um, glamour that you're sitting in the museum and you, you do your exhibition, you was in all different magazines. But because of the word of desperate, I almost, you know, have put my family, I have a loving daughter that become a managing director. I have my sister, the whole uh, team working behind the scene. I have a husband that been very patient and supportive. Everybody, it repay with one word, desperate and work. 
You know, so for me now, when the time I need to sleep, I go sleep. At the time that I'm doing the exhibition, excuse me, bath is not my bath. Sofa is my bed. I sleep in the sofa when my, my daughter say, Mom, go to sleep. I say, yeah, I sleep here for two hours and I wake up. But now I think, you know, if I can able to change, I will put aside of the times to pause and think what is important. I think, you know, for me to take the desperate away, I get not being more successful, being appreciated with my family, my, my, yeah. my whole family and people surrounding me. Now I can look at everybody. In the past, I was talking to you and I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm going to work, what I'm going to do next. Well, you need work balance, okay? I mean, no matter what it is that you do it. And especially since you've had the health crisis, you. Tell her. You need, yeah, I'm telling you, you need, to, you need to balance your life a little because that success will be there, you know, no matter what. But you have to be physically healthy to be able to continue it. It's a different lifestyle when, like, another word for desperate, I guess, is you're a starving artist. And you're not just physically starving and the next thing you sell is your meal ticket and she has a really hungry kid and I'm always eating. <laughs> but I mean, food is cheaper. <laughs> great and not great, but at the same time you're you're hungry for the light. You're hungry to be heard and you're trying to grasp on to every opportunity the world throws at you regardless if it's a great opportunity or not because every minute counts, every dime counts and you don't know when someone's going to say, that's all of your life, bye-bye. But how yeah. is that different then from anyone else who is self-employed? Just as a question, okay? When you're self-employed, you're working for yourself, so every minute counts, every time you're not working, you're losing money. I think these I are I think that's why everyone challenges. needs to go to therapy now. <laughs> <laughs> And also, you know, like, what my I'm, son is a therapist and, and he's self-employed. So, so, so I think this is what I can share. My mm -hmm. thought to people is, um, when you are self-employed, right, mm -hmm. you see time is very important. But because you did not have give yourself time to relax and time to spend with your family or people that you love, what you do is you are really judging all your patient and your soul. Your soul, when your soul and your mind is not working, you would raising the times that you're working. If you right now, I tell you, if people tell me to go take a nap, I'm not taking 30 minutes. I'm only taking two hours. You know, but the times that I I would tell you, you know, like without a balanced life, you know. I, you, in the past, I tell you, I am not counting minutes. I, you know, like I only before my kidney fail, I only allow myself to sleep two to four hours, and sometimes my eye can be blood red like a jaguar for a few days, you know, because I, I over expand, extended my working times. Um, now I tell people I am not self employed. You know what? You know, I'm always love to tell myself, you know, with your intuition, with your passion, with all that. If, if I am working hard enough now, I prove my word to people. They can wait. You guys can wait. And I, I can rest a little bit. Well, one thing I'll say that I see the changes, uh, and I'm proud of her, is I think, I mean, everyone who's considering a family business, I would say, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're going to do it, uh, this is a great advice. It's just having that life and work balance change our whole relationship. I used to really struggle. I, I, she even shared a little bit. I didn't feel like, I feel like when I was eating, or I was talking about work, when I woke up, the mm. first thing is work. I wait, I lived that work, and then I lived with my boss, and I was like, you know, some people can go home and complain about their boss. Oh my goodness, my boss sucks sometimes. <laughs> you know, and they can tell that to their mother, who's the comfort. And I felt like I couldn't tell anyone. And it's a family pride, you can't tell outside. And that was really, really tough on our relationship. So we didn't always sit here so so civil, you know. But well, she'll never fire you. She can, she can, she can do whatever I want. But I think um, I stepped away from the company for a year. We reflected, I came home, and we installed this policy where every Thursday morning we take a walk. 
and we don't talk about work that whole hour and then we use that as a practice and then for the first time I felt like oh she's really listening to my concerns it wasn't okay let's get over this and talk about work and then so now she lets herself take a day off once a week that means I get to take a day off once a week and so you know um, I think that's what it is work-life balance and anyone who's self-employed I urge everyone to do it you can work about things anytime absolutely the work will always be there yeah but will you yeah. but that's why you need to keep that in mind okay you know Mindy it must have been such an honor to have been invited to exhibit solo at the Taubman Museum of Art back in what uh, mid 2021 what was that like for an artist that is like you're signing a contract that someone say I sponsor you and for you to um, get a degree from a kindergarten to PhD degree. Mm -hmm. And you say, wow, you being, you, you being offered that, right? Free. And I dream to have that. I say, okay, let's sign. I don't know what I'm signing into. <laughs> so when I, during the time I, I um, earlier we talking about my mentor, who is my client become uh, very close and I tell her, I, with the COVID, unfortunately, I cannot feel my dream. And then she said, what is your dream? I say, to feature my work in the museum. She said, whoa, that's easy. I said, easy? I said, okay. <laughs> so we have a, a meeting. At the first beginning in Taman, we were walking to the hallway. They say, we put five of your work in the hallway. But we take you to the bowl to pick the pieces speaking to you. So when I go there, we see million, million dollar painting and all that. I starting to pick the pieces. So I say, well, that is very excited part because I just tell myself, well, they're very excited. And then later on, when I start, I say, what I can offer without a art degree, without anything, how I'm going to tell the audience I'm different and I'm good enough to be in. Next to these people. So then I worked on three pieces, and then when the uh, director of the museum see the difference, she say, okay, now you are not going to be five pieces. At the end of the day, when we finish and set up, I am all over the museum with 63 pieces. Oh, wow. And oh, then, wow. don't wow yet. <laughs> <laughs> because within that six months, that is a lot. Because, you know, at that time, this little one keeps saying, Mom, it's not good enough, it's not good enough. I say, I told her, it's not for the gift shop. It's for, it's for the paint. It's, you have your solo exhibition. So, so it's, lucky. it's lucky that we have no law that we cannot do anything. Either I will strangle myself or someone. Right? <laughs> then I keep doing it, doing it, doing it. Then I say, okay, Mindy, how to yourself? What's your intuition? How are you going in the past, like right now, people sign and register to be here to listen to what I say. But there is public. You, the credit is more like this. They are not like, oh yeah, Mindy, you know, like sure, your word is good. No, I say what? And now this little one is like a bee, like <laughs> <laughs> to me. So I say, what I'm going to do is I just say, okay, Mindy, what your voice to be, voice, voice, and what your intuition, what your passion. I say, you know what? I see, when I go to the museum, I see the painting, every stroke, every thing, every story they tell, we can see. But I say, what's it? I pair with the, 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 the whole um, museum exhibition is about, I select the pieces that speak to me. I say, well, in that case, I have a, I'm a Germanized, I have two Mindy, so my, 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 uh, Oh, the Mindy will sign the contract. I really did sign the contract with the museum. And then my younger Mindy say, well, you know what? Maybe the painting spoke to you, and you share that your work and spoke to the audience. So when uh, the director hear what I have tell them, with the painting that, um, for example, if you, if you go to my catalog, um, let me um, get an example. When people see this, you know, what they see is a painting, but I put them in three that dimensional. And some of the painting, I put mouses, I put that, I say, standing right there. 
if you see the mouse, if you see the bees, if you see the um, bird, will you put all this down and travel with me to the painting? So you see the whole actual painting, um, you know, to be in, in you. And then I make a little trick and sometimes I make people laugh. It's just like this one. Oh. So when I pick George Washington, and then they, I ask them, do you know why I picked this? And then do you know what George, uh, George Washington painting too? They say, um, because of the color, uh, because of this and because of that. I say, no. If you look at how uh, George Washington stand, this is what I tell my audience. George Washington say, hey honey, I have been waiting for very long. When are you ready? <laughs> so, I got the, I received the, uh, the comment with a lot of people, they say they are very, um, they, they have a different experience. Yeah, you created an ambiance that yeah. reflects, you know, that carries your, your um, creations, you know, to a different level. Yeah. People and can actually feel it. Yes, and then with that, I, I would tell, uh, and I share one very important thing, is, you know, like with us, you know, we all often to say, I hope someone will come in to help us. And I think, you know, like we need to work very hard, you know, and the passion, when we work hard and the passion that we, we have, we're asking for one person that can able to hear our voice. And I was really lucky to have Joanne Casulo that here, and then she was um, uh, funding the whole exhibition, so I can be here to tell people and share my thought. You just need one, that person will really um, be there, there for you. Well, a lot of people are here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that was a exhibition for, for whatever it be. Yeah, yeah I, I think like that's one thing. Uh, every artist yearns to be their, let their voice be heard. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's art, you know, yeah. How, whatever the medium is that you use. Well, we've talked a lot about your creations and whatnot. Um, of all the things that you've done, is there one or two that's your favorite? I would say um, Kelly, which is my first name of my uh, creation. And what is that? It's a Kelly, Kelly Lariat, Lariat, right? Yeah. yeah. And then Kelly is the uh, actually uh, almost all of the people know uh, my daughter named Kai, but her actual name is Kelly. I oh. named after her. <laughs> and what what I did is, you know, at that time when I uh, created Kelly, I want people. Just like me, I have no uh, boundary or no limit of what I am create because I have not been good at school, been learning the structure or the philosophy of what I should do to become an artist. So for me, I want to create something that can be a uh, nickname, can be a bracelet, can be a headband, can be everything. And um, that piece is from uh, where I start for uh, 2002 until now, um, people still People favorites, and so that was my, my yeah. favorite piece. That's your signature piece? Okay. Kai, what's of all the things that <laughs> mom has created, what's your favorite? Me. Wow. <laughs> When they come and they see like an Asian behind a booth or anything, they're like, oh, are you Mindy? And I just tell them, that's my creator. <laughs> and, and she made me first before that's anything else. That's a great else. answer to my question. Oh, yeah. It took nine years, okay? I mean, sorry, nine months. <laughs> took her time. She took her time. She played it. I mean, besides, all jokes aside, I think um, one of my favorite piece um, is... Uh, is this panther? I have a panther here, mm -hmm. and she made it for me. It's one of my loved ones, but I my favorite one is uh, is a different panther. Uh, one of the reason I think it's my favorite is because it's a strong animal. It's a big cat, but it looked very timid and soft and gentle. But you know, it is magnificent, and it has that majestic energy, and it could be mean. But it's gentle and it's a good cat. Um, it was it's elegant and it's meticulously put together. And I think one of the reasons I love that piece is because it it, it it reminds me of my mother. And I know it's my favorite because it's hard to ship it out. And 
there's this balance where oh. a two thousand dollar piece will, <clears throat> and it's like <laughs> oh I don't want to let it go and I sometimes when she creates work I'm like can we can we not can I not upload it to the shop <laughs> and then her question is do you want your next meal <laughs> do you want your rent paid um, like what's up like do you want to work um, so I think like it, since this is a business talk I, I think. When an artist is truly invested, they're making things that should be hard to let go. But we should also understand that it's going to go to someone who loves it more than you, right? And I think one thing I want a lot of young artists to understand is don't make art to sell. Make mm -hmm. art that speaks to yourself, that it rips you to sell it. That's right. A, that's a great way to, to present Almost that. most pieces are like that for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, I can see yeah. what, what you mean by that. Yeah. You know, listening to both of you during this whole time, it reminds me of almost like a Cinderella story, you know, where you know, she grew up and she was friends with all the little animals oh, yeah. and, and, you know, but, she, but her dream, you know, yeah. came true and she was the princess and she was all of these things and mm -hmm. it just seems as though that's how your story has, you know, I mean, she named to. me Elizabeth Kelly. It was the most princessy, queeny <laughs> thing. Grace Kelly and Queen Elizabeth. I mean, she was really going for the princess name. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, came out. <laughs> I'm going to close with this last question. Yeah. You've been very gracious in donating to causes. What are some of your favorite charities that you donate to? Gives um, us a sense of who you are. Yes, um, one of the, uh, I, I have a few, you know, like what, whoever was in uh, my website that uh, listed, they all my favorites, you know, for the, the one that I pretty much involved is the National Kidney Foundation mm -hmm. is because you know that related to me um, like for for how you know like I got my kidney fail and all that one of the thing is into my um, into my mind and it's get very scared no matter how strong I am outside to pretend dress the way that I want and then um, I don't know how to ask help I did not know how to open my mouth to ask help, you know. That's why uh, the time said that two and a half years when I try to rebuild my confidence and everything, I just tell myself this time in life, in the past if anybody come in, Mindy do you want to donate a peaceful option or donate into uh, some uh, organization, I say yes. But I'm not necessary to know their meaning, but right this time I do, you know, pick the, um, I pick what I, I am and I'm going to uh, approach them. And of course, like the American uh, Chinese Museum right now, um, what I learned about the American Chinese Museum, that what they offer to people, you know, what the meaning behind how they want people to know about this, um, that is my, also my favorite, you know. Yeah. Well, we're glad you're going to be including the Chinese American Museum in your charities. That concludes our program today with uh, Mindy Lam and Kai Sia. Mindy's jewelry will be on sale till 4 o'clock this afternoon. It's a great opportunity to check all special people on your holiday list. So I would encourage everyone to go shopping. Don't feel guilty because in spending money, you are supporting the Chinese American Museum and supporting our friend Mindy and Kai here. So. I mean, 20% donated here, and you still get 20% off today and online as well. I'm gonna, we're gonna have a code, uh, CAMDC20, and then everyone who's shopping online will receive 20% and will also donate in honor. Uh, at www.mindylam.com. <laughs> any questions? Yeah, any questions, anybody? Yes. So, Kai, what are you doing on your work life balance? Where are you finding that? Eating. <laughs> your life evolves around your mother's mm -hmm. art. Truly, evolves. your your life at this moment. So you, as a person, yeah. as a separate entity from your mother's art or your mother's business, how are you finding that journey for yourself? Honestly, this might sound silly, but having extra time to spend with friends somewhere here, 
that's a luxury. Um, I used to spend my spare time at networking events, and I barely got time for myself. Um, and Lam decided that, you know, on my true day off, it's my true day off. And um, we, I also moved out, uh, so I have my own home. And so that's a, she also knows to respect that as a sacred space. If, I, if I'm at home and I'm working, that's because I want to. And it's no longer like, do this, do this, do this. Um, I mean, of course, work-life balance is uh, important. But I think um, as I'm taking care of myself, even on my day offs, I will ask, you want to grab a bite with me? And then the family sits together, and we're just together. So that's, that's what I'm doing. Like besides, like, and also I cook. Cooking is uh, one of my favorite outlets. So yeah. I do quite a lot of that. So as your creative expression for you personally, is your, is your being a cook or a chef? Well, I think growing up taking care of my, my mom, I think uh, what I learned is uh, making food for other people is a form of uh, caretaking. Mm -hmm. Taking care of myself, my soul, everyone who's eating, their soul, and you know, everyone feel loved, you know? Yeah. Yes. I would like to add that Kai, uh -huh. Kelly, <laughs> she's very creative mm -hmm. in her own way. Mm -hmm. I have seen her silver pieces and she has done beautiful things mm -hmm. and I really hope you don't forget that side of you mm -hmm. because you have done beautiful pieces. Well sure you have your octopus. Yes. But she the last thing a piece I saw was a bracelet or a gadget that an artist as for it, a design for him to put his brushes. Yeah. And it's like a armor for his arm. I remember that. A cuff uh -huh. with leather. I mean, it was spectacular. I mean, so. my root and my muse, I, I got <laughs> a lot of, she's my mentor. So nowadays, besides um, being client facing and operational, I get to have some creative liberty. So uh, when there's a design challenge in um, engineering, uh, I get to do that, and I would smith certain components for her. Yeah. What's your background? Well, did you go to university and? I didn't get to graduate college. She that's when she was really sick, and I decided to give up on academia, and I went to uh, apprentice and learn the craft that. Because when, when she got ill, we decided our hands are here. Either we elevate her brand or we don't come out at all. Uh, either we're going to make things with purpose or we just stay home and do something else. So I learned a craft to help her bring it up 10 notches. <laughs> Everybody for being here, David. You want to say anything? Oh, thank closing? you very much. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, this event <laughs> this event will, uh, as you see, is being recorded and will be on our YouTube channel. And uh, we really appreciate you coming out. It's, oh, thank you. it's a really amazing story and amazing thank work. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great conversation. Thank you. Thank you.